Good day, and welcome to Queries Aren't Scary. Good morning, Chuck. Boo! <laughs> I could, I'm sorry, Lori. I, I couldn't help myself. So. No, I said uh, they're not scary. You're not supposed to scare Oh, they're people. not scary. <laughs> wrong, wrong approach. So well, I think that's in the eye of the beholder. So we'll, we'll kind of uh, uh, take people where they're at with that. But um, uh, I, again, we welcome everybody here. Uh, thanks uh, for showing up and learning, wanting to learn more about Aceware. And again, in case you haven't noticed, I think Lori really kind of enjoys doing these. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll move forward and uh, help, help the rest of you really try to do what's on the screen, and that is to take away the fright or the scare or the anxiety about doing queries. Um, so uh, let's tell you what we're going to talk about, and then we're going to ask you how you really feel about queries. So uh, first thing, and and uh, ra raise your hand. Let's do the quick raise of hands uh, for those, and, and this will be for um, newbies. If this is the first um, webinar that you've really sat in on live, raise your hand. Lori, remind people how to do that. On the toolbar, there is a little yellow hand with a red arrow up and down. If this is your first webinar, click the little yellow hand to raise the arrow, and I'll get a total tally. All right, yeah, it was hopefully, well, I, hopefully we have a new ones. We've got some new customers coming on board or new people coming on. So any newbies? Anybody? Anybody? We have a couple of newbies. Very good. Surprise. Well, welcome, Yay. welcome. We'll, uh, we're happy to have you. Um, so uh, oh, let's go back here. The idea, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the difference between a query and a report. And I think sometimes people get those confused or they blend them together. But it's a two-step. You need both. Uh, and we'll, we'll try to clarify that for you. Uh, we're, we'll talk about how do you find queries and, of course, how you run them. And that's the, basically the process of uh, normal reports. And then this is where, hopefully, I think people are really interested in, and this is how do you build new queries. And uh, adding multiple query elements and even finding out about what is a query or you know, what the query contains. Uh, and then we'll talk about some tips, searching, sorting, naming uh, ideas in terms of doing queries. And then finally, we have a stump the query chump. Uh, we'll try to move through the main part of this fairly expeditiously. And we'll ask you to be thinking about queries that you'd like uh, to put together or you've struggled with, perhaps. And we'll use those as examples as we kind of illustrate some thoughts and ideas and help you get familiar with queries. So um, Lori, I think right now we're going to ask for people to fill out a poll on their comfort level or experience with queries. So if you'll take that away. I will do that. I'm asking for everybody to tell us about your query experience. And for those of you who are new, you just select one and then click Submit. And the GoToWebinar software will automatically collate all the responses so I can show you where everybody else is. So the poll is open. Go ahead go. and respond. There we go. You're probably sick of polls. You've been getting the political pollsters calling you. And this is one that uh, hopefully you won't have to agonize about. So. All right. How are we doing? 100% view. Doing great. pretty well. Doing Hang on just a second, and I will close the poll and share the results with you. We are pretty evenly spread up across the board today, but nobody feels really good about their query skills. OK, so. OK. Well, uh, again, I will uh, uh, results. Did you show the results? to? There we go. OK. Boy, nobody, uh, uh, you guys are all modest out there. So. Uh, all right, well, we'll try to help move more of you to that latter position. And um, I will say just at the get-go, and this is one of the things about using uh, registration software using Student Manager, is that we always say that no one was born knowing how to run and operate Student Manager. That's a learned thing. And again, you're here. We thank you. Uh, we commend you. We're going to try to help you with that learning thing, that learning thinging. Queries versus reports. Well, this is one of the things, again, query is the question you ask of the data that you've been collecting. And um, it's like to select the data that you want to look at. 
And the, one of the notes here, again, if the information changes, the query might be, uh, what is a course number? Course number begins with, and you'll enter a value. Um, if you added a number, uh, added registrations to that course since from one time to the other, the query results will represent the data in the database at the time you run the query. So it is, if you would, always uh, real-time data results uh, from uh, into whatever report you get. And so the report is how the data is formatted. So again, query is the question, what data do we want to look at? Report is the issue of how is it going to look? Is it portrait? Is it landscape? Is it columnar? Is it in a chart? Is it in a, a list? That is what a report is. Uh, OK, a few things to remember about queries. Um, again, kind of reiterating, query brings in the raw data. The report is what puts it into something that's organized and displayed for you. And again, if we're, uh, for those of you that are new, we have a whole section of data. And I'm going to actually jump back to um, the help guide now and our website. So I'm going to go to the ACEWARE website. Underneath the website, we've got a couple of resources. One is the SM Online Help. <clears throat> the other one is the webinars and the webinar archives. Well, if you're here, you've, you've got a webinar. Uh, we do have one coming up, and we'll tell you again. But in the archive, underneath ACEWARE Webinars, and it's also referenced under Resources, we have a series of webinars on reporting, and uh, we've got two or three different other queries, part one, part two. Um, don't know whether we'll replace part one or we'll just add this query aren't scary into the list. But you'll note the um, reporting elements, guide to the galaxy, intermediate, report modification. Certainly part of your use of the software is not only doing your query to get the right data, but how it's going to look. And this is where you can get additional resources um, in addition to the help guide uh, to be able to get you there. So again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the help guide. And again, under the student manager online help, under student manager topics, we have a section on reporting. And under reporting, we have creating and modifying queries. So again, lots of resources for you uh, to help you on your way. Lori, any buzzing questions that we need to address right now? Are we doing good? I think we're doing pretty well. All right. So uh, the difference between, again, queries and uh, the report format. Uh, and again, in most areas, uh, student manager queries are unique to a specific report area. And so if we go to student manager, and I'll get logged in here on the demo. When you go to a given report area, the queries that you get in this area will be different than the queries you get in this area. Now, here's one, queries by income by date, income by course. Those two actually, I believe, do share the same query set. I think there's another down in faculty. Some of these share the same query set. But otherwise, most of the time, there is a different set of queries underneath each one of these report areas. And we'll kind of explain a bit about more of that later. Uh, quick reports. When you're on a quick report area from the course, from the name, or if you would, the receipt printing from registrations is technically a quick report. There isn't a query uh, because you're already at the record that you want to work with. And so again, the idea here is that if you're setting on a course and you go to quick reports, all of these reports listed will address this one particular course. Uh, that's why they're called quick reports. You don't have to deal with the query. Um, most queries start with a question. So uh, the idea, uh, the query is what you create to answer. What programs met in the ACME building last year? Uh, let me ask a question on that. Would that be a one-part or a two-part query? Raise your hand if you think it is a two-part query that we need to create on that. 
This is an on-the-fly pop quiz. Raise your hand once if you think that'll need two elements in the query. For those of you that have done queries, if you if you you know you don't have to answer. About half our folks think this is going to be a two-part query. And that would be correct because you would need one for the building and you'd need for a range of dates. How many people attended cooking classes last year? Uh, again, that's a two-parter, but that's the type of a question that you can do with a query. How many people paid by check this past fall? Again, that'd be a two-parter. How many registrants came from a particular zip code? OK, one part or two part? Raise your hand if you think it is a two part. OK? One, two, three. Anybody? Yeah, we have a couple people okay. think it's going to be a two part. Yeah, that's, that, that would be actually just a one part. And I guess it also depends maybe if they said if you, depending on the reporting area. So I guess I could see where that would be. But if you add to that question, for classes in a particular topic area, okay, that becomes a two-parter. During the time of X and Y, well, that might be a three-part query. So again, these are the types of things that you do uh, in, in building queries. So where is the query screen? Where are we going to see that? Well, you'll select the reporting area. You'll get then a print option screen. <clears throat> and again, most of the, quote, long form report areas will, uh, will go through that process. Um, and the next screen, after you do the settings on this screen, will be the query screen. Now, worries hints, you've got to pay attention to the settings on your print setup screen or the printing options screen. Uh, in some cases, whether you want waitlisted, if you're doing registration reports, it'll ask you to check or not check for waitlisted, for canceled, for billing only registrations. Uh, so again, uh, you'll need to pay attention to that. Uh, in some cases, we have, ACEWARE has automatically checked some things. For instance, in doing financial reports, most of the time we have pre-checked the include canceled records for you because if you're looking at money, you might have money in a canceled registration, and you typically want to include it. Uh, in some cases, we will actually, it remembers your preference. So again, but do pay attention to what those settings are, those checks are, as you move through. Now, the other thing to note is that those print settings most always will trump the query. So even though in your query you might want to say include canceled, if this says, if this doesn't have include canceled, it'll over ride your, your query setting. Um, queries, first query element is selected by default. Um, and again, when you land on the query screen, you'll see a little black uh, triangle next to the top query. That is the query that is the default. <clears throat> if that's the one you want, you don't have to click on the row that you would want to select if you were wanting one of the different ones here. You just could click the select button. Um, if you've been wondering where these numbers come from, the run count, every time a person in your shop runs a query, <clears throat> it increments the run count. So within your organization and your use of student manager, those queries that have been run most often will have the highest run count and they will float to the top. <clears throat> so you might think of it as the cream rises to the top or that these are your BFF, BFQ, best friend queries. They're the ones that you've been using the most and they'll be at the top of the list for you. Isn't that nice? Okay, then, uh, well, we, <laughs> I guess Lori has the run count, which uh, kind of covers what I just mantered about. And in the query view, you can actually click on the heading for both the run count and the query title to change the sorting. And I'm going to go ahead and run to the demo on that now. So if we were running my favorite report, Deadbeats, and we have the setup screen. There's my uh, settings include, not include. When you say OK through this, and whether you choose additional or you, you want to recycle, the query area now 
the run count has the most popular queries sorted by the number of users. Uh, the default is the first one. And if I wanted course number, I could just hit select and choose it. The sort business is if I wanted to sort the run count from lowest to highest, if I maybe made a brand new query and it has never been used yet, uh, you can click the run count heading. I'm going to click on it now. And now you'll see it sorts the list from lowest to highest on the run count. Do the same on query title. Click on query title, and now it is alphabetized by the name of the label you gave it. Click it again, and it is reverse alphabetized from uh, Z, to Z to Alpha. And so again, you can manage the views of the query that way. The other thing, you, okay, so that once you have uh, once you have the query that you want. You can hit the select button. Uh, you will then be prompted to respond to the question. We'll talk about the ask later, which would be an interactive query versus a hard-coded query. Um, a course number, a course date, a uh, name, a value, and a character field. Uh, when you're picking a query and you have the, the option where it's starting to ask you for data, on numeric, uh, I think it's numeric and character values, you can actually, um, by clicking on the little ellipse, you can get a list of the different values for that particular code. Um, so if we had subject code in a list, and we wanted to pick a subject code, and we're thinking, oh, was that compute, or computer, or comp, or CMPT? Well, you can click the ellipsis over here, and it'll show you all the different subject codes set up in this particular group of data. So it, oh, it's computer, spelled out. And that is how uh, you can use your little cheat sheet on that. OK, how are we doing? Everybody doing OK, Lori? We doing good? Everybody seems to be doing very well. Thank you. All right. Uh, searching for queries. Um, when you are in the query uh, box, if you right mouse click in the middle of the box, you'll get the search mode. So I'm going to cancel this. And so again, if I right mouse click in the middle of the box, you can search the queries by title, by a keyword in the title, or by the actual field. And again, uh, in this case, I can see all the titles, so it's not a big deal. But I'll bet how many of you, raise your hand if you have a lot of query lists that go on for pages. Raise your hand once. Count to three. One, two, three. People Anybody still pressing? voting. Oh, uh, come on. You, you know what you either know or you don't. <laughs> About 15% of our folks are saying that, yes, they have queries oh, that go I on there, forever. I, I bet there are more of you. But anyway, so that when you have lots of queries and you say, well, I really need a date, so that what you can do is go into the title, type the word date, and it'll look at only those queries that have the word date in them. And you could say, well, I could, if you right mouse click again, it goes back to all. Let's say begin date. And we now we've owned the only two queries in the list that actually have begin date uh, at least described as a uh, queryable item in the system. Now, uh, I'm going to right mouse click to get them all. One of the other things, and we'll, we'll talk about this more when we're building a query, but if you're a new user in a group or, or you're, you, you've had Aceware around for a while, one of the things that you might notice is that some of the names of these queries are yeah, it's kind of hard to fathom. Uh, query titles have been created by human beings, not the computer. So that when you have a title here, um, that may or may not be an accurate representation of what's inside it. You say, well, how do I know that? Well, if you click on the code, or if you click on the query title line, and look at the upper right of your screen. If you look at the upper right of my screen, it will display more of a computer ease view of what this query contains. So if you look at it, it says course number, 
to be entered later, and the report names flag, uh, which is illogical, which means if it's true, it'll report it, and that the state is equal to Kansas. So actually, you'll note in here, uh, this query title is not actually true because it doesn't reference Kansas. Somebody fiddled with it and didn't edit it or rename the title. And again, warning, if you've got a system that's been around for a while and you let people build queries, they'll, these will be there. That's why when you look at a query, if you've not created it, if you've never used it, I would always click on it once, look at the value up the top, uh, and verify that it does at least do what the title says. And again, we'll talk about the idea of renaming uh, and uh, maintaining those queries as you go along. Okay, title search and the field search. The field search is a little bit more detailed or more um, uh, complicated way. If you really were looking for, uh, say, subject code, in a title, what you would do is go to the field search because you might call it subject, you might call it interest, you don't know what a person might have labeled that. So if you, you would have to type for C-O-S-U-B-C-O-D-E. Type for the, type the field name that you want to search for. Well, there actually are two that have subject code in this list. Uh, so again, that is uh, how you can use a search where you really narrow down to a code. OK, someone out there is thinking, well, Chuck knew what to write in that subject code, but I'm a newbie. I'm just getting started. How do I know uh, what fields there are? Well, let me introduce you back to the help guide. Uh, under the student manager help guide, under the table of contents is a screen layout. So if you go to screen layout, in our case, course screen, it will show you the course screen. Just hover over the field that you'd want to search for, and by golly, there it is, co-subcode. It will handily tell you exactly what it is you need when you're out there searching for a code. All righty, so that is the search mode. Um, the uh, searching for queries by field. Now, this is another um, approach in terms of the general aspect of finding a query that you can search for. Uh, sometimes when you're doing this report selection, and I need to, I somewhere missed in the process, um, that whole, I guess, the gestalt of searching for reports. And I'm going to go back to the help guide again. Um, when you're looking at reports in Student Manager, uh, one of the issues is, and I'm going to topics reporting, there is an element called a report area guide. If you're looking for a report or you're looking to get information out of Student Manager, you have to combine both the area that you're going to search in the query you're going to use to select the data, and then the report in terms of the format that it's going to come out in. Different report areas are going to have different sets of data within them. So the accounting area has a series of courses, and this is organized within accounting, cash box, daily income, one line, one reg. The, the report area will show you what are the report and, or the databases? This is the storage areas, names, courses, payments. If we wanted to look for something related to names, course, or the payments, the cash box uh, would be one I could, you could use. Daily income by source has course names, pay, and register. Income and enrollment course is just course and grouping. So if I wanted a course level income and enrollment report, and somehow wanted to deal with people within that, I wouldn't go to the enrollment and income summary area. The deadbeat area, uh, which deals with registrations, has course location names, name UDFs, and register. So again, that's one of my favorite areas because most of the time, between these five databases, I can query and get the kind of data that I'm looking for. <clears throat> but again, the point is, 
is that in this particular guide, you can kind of see what are the report, uh, what, what different report areas include what databases. And the databases, of course, are where the data resides. And so you have to kind of follow the money trail, if you would, back to the database name uh, that holds the information you're looking for. Uh, and again, um, Lori, anything to add on that? You, you, I just want to kind of clarify. You, you have to kind of know where to search uh, yeah, and make sure you know to find it. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. One of the and things that I don't, uh, Lori would have given me a great little slide for it, but one of the things that I would uh, a lot of times use in this example is say if you're going into the grocery store to look for groceries to make supper, that if you're wanting to make um, a Chinese food tonight, uh, you wouldn't go to probably the Mexican food section or the um, German food section. You'd go to the section in the grocery store that talks about oriental food or oriental groceries. Uh, again, if I'm looking to get bread for my uh, French bread for my uh, supper for spaghetti, I wouldn't go over to the meat counter and go looking for bread. You'd go over to the bread aisle. And that's kind of the idea here with reports. You need to kind of go where the stuff is that you're trying to search for. OK, searching queries for field. What this allows you to do is if you say, I want to search by firm name, the name of the firm of the person, um, where can I search by firm name and find some data? Well, that's what the uh, search queries by field lets you do. So if you go to tools and uh, reports, search queries for a field. Say, I want to find the firm name. This is, again, FM firm. You need to know the firm name. And the way where you get that is through the screen layout part of Student Manager. Uh, type in FM firm, and it'll show you all of the report areas. It'll give you the name of the report area, demographics firms, demographics registrations, registrations receipts, statistics, um, where we could use the firm field to search for um, uh, some data. Now, just as part of your education here, there are cases where the firm field data might be under a different name. So under the firm table, and I'll go to the screen layout, when we're looking at firms, the firm name is stored in the field called FM firm. Now, in the case of firm, that it's also stored on the name screen under the name NM firm. So let's go back to manager and look up NM firm, NM firm, and see what happens. OK, quite a few more areas you can search for firm data about the people based on where they are on the name record in more areas. So again, um, gives you more options to find uh, a particular report area. OK, so we've got that. Now we're ready to get into the meat of the situation. We'll take about 10 minutes on queries. And again, remember, uh, we're going to try to stump the chumps. So if you've got some tough queries you're trying to pull together, um, be thinking about them, and we'll, we'll, talk, we'll try to cover them at the end. A few words about naming queries. Um, I generally, my recommendation is that you give the queries a name based on what it does, not the report that you're going to use it on. Uh, so it's really the elements in the data that you're searching, not the end report. Because queries can be applied to a variety of different reports, and vice versa. You can get a different number of queries going into any number of reports. Uh, Chuck thoughts. Uh, like I said, I've done that. But like I said, if you're going to do it, try to at least do both. Courses between two dates, maybe you use it in a quarterly report. Uh, that would be fine. Again, I think that's redundant because it really confuses people. Well, I don't want to do a quarterly report. Maybe I'm looking for a list of, um, of what to supervision classes I offer during this time frame. Uh, in larger organizations, initials are helpful. And again, note 
For those of you that have switched to 7.2, it'll now automatically write the creator's name of a query on it. So we do automatically do that for you now. Um, by the by, Lori, I think we have a quick poll question on 7.2. Let's go ahead and pop that up now. All righty. Uh, have you, it's a little slow coming up today, have you upgraded to Student Manager 7.2? Yep. Uh, a lot quick, of folks quick have. Canvas. Quick canvas. Tell us how many of you have. <clears throat> Just kind of curious how we're doing so far. That's been out, of course, since <clears> the <throat> 1st of uh, August. And we have about 85% of our folks who have voted. And uh, let's go ahead. If you're not sure, then okay. you don't need to respond. Let's see what our numbers look like here. I'm going to practice for next Tuesday. With 92% of the Well, there you go. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> We're going to see that plenty enough. It looks like 95% of our people Hot have updated. All right. Very good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, I, I will tell you that we have been doing some tweaking to the system. The current version of 7.2 is, and I'll show you on, is 22. <clears throat> so again, if you are on a little older version, uh, there's a couple of things we've been working on with that. You can always go to the website and download. All you need is that 7.2 executable. Paste it in your system. You're good to go. You don't have to uh, do a great deal of, of uh, mumbo jumbo on that. OK, back to queries. Um, rules. Uh, again, the table containing the field you want must be available in the reporting area. And again, going back to the report area guide, um, you can create an unlimited number of queries in any report area, and hence the, the little tool about searching is always good. And again, gen, uh, this is a sad one. We can't copy and paste queries between different report areas. If you made a great query in Deadbeat and you want to do it in names with registrations, I'm sorry, you'll have to kind of, you'll just, you'll just do it quicker next time. Um, now, uh, I guess I did. This is where this came in. I uh, talked about, uh, let's looking at the big picture now, the alignment of the planets here. You must align your desires for a query with the appropriate reporting area. And again, <clears throat> reinforcing what I mentioned earlier about making sure that you go to a report area that's going to have the database with the fields you want to search for. So again, and the place to do that is to Use the help, the force. Use the help, Luke. <clears throat> uh, and uh, that's, that's where you can uh, go to the online help guide and look at the report area guide. OK, how do we do it? Uh, you go to the query screen for the area you want. Click the Add button. Uh, you'll put in a title. And then you get a query design. It tells you what the title is. You'll have the Add button at the bottom. <clears throat> when you click Add, it'll give you the list of the different fields available in this area to um, choose from <clears throat> to, to build a query. Um, caveat again, we built those. Aceware made those by and large. But again, we are humans, and sometimes the name we gave to these is a little different from one report area to the other. So you'll have to you know, kind of... Uh, Watch through this. Um, and the other thing about this area is that sometimes you'll have an, an element you're looking for that's not in the list. And that's what the add list item is for, that you can actually create uh, a field. Not, not all of the data fields. So if we were in the names, uh, if we were wanting to go to, um, now let's go income detail by registrant. And we're building a query. Not all of the data fields are in the list. And so there are times when you need to do an add list item. Um, again, if we need to, we'll come back and show this later. I want to kind of move through, and then we'll come back on that if you'd like us to cover that. Um, OK, first item. And again, that's, that was step one, was to pick the field that you're going to use. <clears throat> and so again, I'm going to kind of go back to the name record here. 
that in order to do a query on a particular piece of data on the screen, if we were wanting to look county, um, you would need to be able to, to know that that particular data has A, been recorded in your database, that you are tracking county, and that, that uh, the report area that you're looking for has a reference to the names table. So uh, we've done that. We've picked the field. That's the first step. Step two is then, how are we going to measure the field? Uh, in this case, we would have picked a date. <clears throat> and so here are our choices, greater than, less than, between two, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so again, you pick the operator. Now, in picking operators, it's important to know that different types of data have different types of questions that you can deal with. There are basically four types of data uh, that manager use. The biggest group is character, names, titles, most codes are character. Dates, of course, uh, begin date, end date, date registered, date canceled. Numbers, uh, dollar amounts, uh, numbers of sessions, uh, those are your numbers. And then the logical ones are generally the check boxes. Is this canceled or not? Yes or no? True or false? Uh, do you want to be excluded from the mailing list? Yes or no? True or false? Those are logicals. So again, depending on what you pick for a field type, you'll have a different set of operators, which would be your comparison questions. Uh, so for dates, uh, you've got the equal to, greater than, you don't have sounds like. You don't have a date sounding like another. You don't have containing text. Um, uh, numbers are similar to dates, pretty much you know, equal to, greater than, except that you uh, a missing number and uh, a missing date. You can search for missing date, but not in the numbers. Logicals, it's simple. It's either true or it's either false. So those are the, the ways you can measure a query. Um, frequently, you use ask later. If you pick a, a value and you say, I want to do a range from x to y, I honestly think that most of the time you should use ask later. Um, and we can talk about this in the discussion, but generally you get more mileage out of a query if you make it what we call dynamic or interactive, where when you pick it, you'll have an opportunity to enter the values <clears throat> at the time of running the query rather than having it be hardwired, if you would, to January 1st through January 31st, 2010. Uh, there are always exceptions to that, and, uh, and in general, I would say if you have a query that you run frequently, and by that I mean every day, every other day, and it might not change but once a quarter, yeah, if you wanted to say, I want a quarterly report from September 1st to December 31st, and I'm going to run that every day. Well, yeah, you can make that you know, fall quarter 2010, and you, you build it hard-coded, so you just hit click, bang, and run it, um, and then change it for next term, and you'll have spring quarter 2011. You hit bam, click, and you're ready to go. That is legitimate uh, hard-coded uh, query. Lori, comments? You okay with that? I think you did a good job. Okay. <laughs> you're just too agreeable here. Okay, <laughs> back, back. Once you are entering the data and building this query, uh, once you've picked your, your, your values to be entered later, it tells you what you've done, and then it'll ask you to confirm it, and you'll see the new query in your list, and it'll show run count of nothing because it hasn't been run yet. Uh, there you go. That would be ready to use. Um, questions on that? I, did anybody got a burning question, things popping that you want to talk about right now, Lori? We're just about ready to go into the Q&A and, and uh, the Stump the Chump. Actually, I don't have any questions. Okay, at all. so we, we were doing good. All right. Uh, Multi-element queries. The one example you saw would have been for a one element one. But as we mentioned earlier, a lot of times you, you'll want to do range of, I want to do subject matter X for a time frame. So you'll need more than one element. So once you've got one added, you hit add again. 
and then you'll get a connector option. Whoa, and the connector option is the one where you need to think about Boolean logic. I love that term. Boo, isn't that great for Halloween? Boolean logic. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Lori. Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> too bad we don't have an applause meter out there. Shirley, come on, we should have a laugh now. We need one of those laugh prompts or clap prompts. <laughs> uh, okay. The idea is that when you have more than one question, you need to tell the query builder whether you want both of these questions to be true or you want either of the questions to be true. And think of it as when you do and, you narrow the scope. When you do them with ors, you widen the scope. Um, so again, uh, that is the connector. Uh, then you put in uh, whatever it is. You have that uh, OK to finish. And you've then created the query. OK, we're just about ready for the Q&A. Number one, remember, typically you have no more than seven options in a query. Um, but if you haven't figured out this one yet, when you're doing character values, you have the is within a list option, which lets you enter up to 12 different either or commons uh, within an area. And then I guess finally, uh, be aware of reports with just do it. Again, if you haven't been exposed to what a just do it is, a just do it is a command that you can actually make a, it into a custom report, if you would, and that those just do it's can manipulate and se select and modify data. So you, you've got a variety of, if you would, moving parts and reports, and we want to make sure we, uh, we've got those covered. So. Um, all right, um, Lori, any questions? Um, ready? People entered any stump the chump queries at this point? Not a single one. Oh, one. Well, let me go back. There's, <laughs> there's a couple things. Let me go back to the query builder and let's let's go through an example here. And I'm trying to think if uh, what I can do for uh, occupation type. I guess we've got occupation. I'm going to uh, use the occupation code and search for report areas that I can query on occupation. Well, NMOCC is the code for occupation. And there are a variety of areas within that. Name tags, rosters, um, statistics, uh, now, I don't see deadbeat in there. So let's go through, uh, well, let's use, actually, let's do names with registrations. We can do that. So we go reports, uh, demographics, names with registrations. We have the setup screen. Uh, now I'm going to look for occupation now. I'm going to search for the field. OK, there, there isn't one. So I'm going to hit the Add button. I'm going to say occupation uh, begins with. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I have the empty screen of what it contains. I'll hit the Add button. And I'm going to look for occupation code. Well, by golly, there it is, spelled occupation code. Now again, back into the idea of naming Sometimes you might have people enter that as name dash occupation code. So you have to kind of watch that. To select it, we double click. And now we get the operator. Begins with or matches. And again, we, we talk about this a bit more in the query, uh, the other query um, uh, webinar. But a lot of the time, begins with or matches is a common selection. Uh, some of these others does not begin with, ends with, greater than, greater than, or less than. You say, well, why would we do that on character values? Well, zip code the character field. So if you were doing a zip code, you might want to do greater than or less than. Matches another is between two values. Again, a high-low uh, for character. Again, well, zip code. If you wanted to do zip codes between two zip code values. I want to show you the is within a list. If you click on is within a list, it lets you enter up to 12 different values for that. So if I was wanting to search for an occupation code, and I might want to search for two or three, this would be the one that I'd want to pick. 
I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think that's probably a good example. And I'm going to say, ask later. Finish creating condition, OK. I'm going to say, OK, again. And there it is in the list, occupation code begins with. Now, for those of you that are astute, what did I do there? I labeled it begins with, but it actually is in a list. So now I should rename that so that it matches up with what I'm trying to do. Occupation code is a list. OK, so now that is accurate and up to date. Um, OK, anybody have any stump the chump ones here? I, I'm, I'm feeling like uh, we're, not getting, we're not getting challenged here today. I just sent you one on the chat, so I'm. I'm oh, okay. Gonna, Let me uh, take a look at that put here. Them in there, so you can take a look at them. All right. Uh, an interest code, an email, is not a blank field. All right. Um, let's take a look at that. So uh, the idea is, people want to find a specific interest code, and that the and that they want to email them. So they want to have the email is not blank. Well. The area that I would go into for that typically is mailing labels. If you're wanting people's names, mailing labels is probably one of the best ways to do it because you can do it with course data, without course data. Let me just reference my, my favorite report areas for, for giggles and grins. If you're doing registration data, the deadbeat area is probably the best. For people data, with or without name info, mailing la or without registration info, mailing labels. For course data, CEU reporting. And the reason I like that is because you have one row of uh, record per course. All right, so mailing labels for people. So we would want one, and we'll just leave this straight up here. Now notice here, here's a box. Exclude the don't mail names. So if I wanted to send out a list to people who are, I want to send apology letters to people who are mad at us and might have included don't mail on their list, I'd need to uncheck that. OK, we're going to hit OK. We're looking for interest code and email. Well, I don't see anything in the list here. So we're going to add uh, interest code in a list. And email is not empty. So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, we get our empty box. We're going to look for interest code. Now, when you're in this box, if you type alphabetically I, uh, it will jump to, you'll note it is in alpha order, it'll jump to the field beginning with I. And there's our interest code. And we're going to say, now let me show you begins with their matches. We'll not. We'll go back. Interest begins with our matches is for a single match. OK, I don't want that. We want is within a list. So we can pick multiple values. And we'll ask later. OK, now we're going to add a second element. So and or or. Well, we want both of these to be true. So we're going to do and. And then we're going to look for email, e for email email address, and there it is, is not an empty field. And that is your query for interest code and email address is not empty. All right, anything else? Classes that meet on a specific day of the week. Oh, that's a good one. That one actually, um, the classes meeting on a specific day of the week, you would need to use a just do it for that, because there isn't a way to check the class meeting day with the normal query element. Now, there is a report. OK, the, 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 the query question was, you want to search for classes meeting on a specific day of the week. Um, now, I, well, I should say that. If you're looking at a day where you could actually pick Monday, you know, the 25th of October, you can do that. Uh, let's say courses room use list, date or location, and classes meeting between two dates, 
we'll go ahead and do one for classes meeting on a specific date. You might clarify, Laura, if they meant Mondays only or they meant on a specific day. They meant day of week, Mondays only. Okay, that is not this response. This would be on a specific day where you'd use the class meeting date equal to a date, and that would let you pick the 25th of uh, October for a meeting date. Now, uh, like I said, if you need to run Mondays only, there is a way to do it with what's called a just do it. Now, there is a statistical report under courses, course data summary, where you can pick day of the week and it will give you the day of the class and you could pick Mondays and it will show you all the classes meeting on Mondays. Uh, so this is under reports, statistics, course statistics. And I'm going to go ahead and run it for um, the fall classes in my demo data. And this might give you what you're looking for. So this will show you for fall, here are the number of classes meeting on Monday, the number of classes meeting on Tuesday. If you wanted to show the detail on those, and let's go back to that again, statistics course, course data summary. If you uncheck summary report, then you'd be able to actually see that particular set with the class sessions that actually meet on that particular, those particular days. So this would give you, here are the classes meet Mondays, here are the classes that meet Tuesdays, here are the classes that meet Thursdays. Uh, so again, that's, uh, that's a report that will kind of give that to you. If you need something else, uh, you'll need to uh, get with your tech and do it, just do it. We have had a slowdown on the GoToWebinar. Can you just run through that again a little bit slower because your, your screens flash by. Oh, the okay. Um, the day of week report. Under reports, statistics, courses, course data summary. Uh, and again, if you're new to the manager, the statistics area, great way, a way to look up data on names and courses. Course data summary. <clears throat> on the pick a field, if you'll go down to day of class, the summary report um, gives you the option to show just the number of classes that meet on the specific day, Monday classes, Tuesday classes, Wednesday classes, or if you um, uncheck summary, it'll actually show you the names of the classes that meet during this time frame. So that is the class setup. This is the printing options, kind of the setup of the class. And now the query will then set what courses do I want to check and report what days they meet on? In other words, between a range of dates for a, um, um, a particular time frame, I'm going to choose range of dates, and we're going to say between 01, 01, 10, and 03, 31, 10. If I wanted to be a, do an analysis of the first quarter and to see what classes met on, started on particular days of the week. Uh, so on the first quarter, I had one class starting on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, and three on Friday. And that is my uh, start date reference. OK, any other questions, any other buzz um, going on on the query side? I don't think so. I think we're good. Well, let me go back, and again, as part of the issue of uh, analyzing queries uh, because, again, unfortunately, people are involved in the process and people don't always get as detailed as they should. Um, when you're in, uh, again, the query manager routine, this creator is what I mentioned that in 7.2, if you build a new query, it'll put your, your username as far as the person who created it. Now, if you're really not sure what some of these are, uh, and, and like I said, when you click on the query itself, you'll see a note in the upper right. And again, if you move the mouse, it goes away. Now, if you watch the upper right, course subject code, upper code, subcode, well, that wasn't exactly clear as to what that included. So if you click on the row of the query and hit edit,
you can actually then now see a bit more of a humanish view of what that is. Is within a list to be entered later. Oh, okay, yeah, now I see what you're doing. Okay, um, Lori, any other buzz questions? We 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 just doing that darn good. I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, she we'll has try. hesitation. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try it again. Hopefully, we haven't spooked people. Uh, we'll be in a couple of weeks, November the 10th, 2010, at um, our charting. And we're excited about this. This is a brand new uh, tool for reporting that's available in 7.2. And Matthew, will, Matthew Olson will be our guest lecturer on this. And uh, so again, uh, be there or be square. Um, again, uh, the, the whole reporting query system is so crucial to using your ACEWARE. And uh, the, the way you're going to learn how to do it is to go in. You, you've, got the, um, you've got the help guide here on your student manager help guide. Uh, and as far as where I got the help guide from, on the ACEWARE homepage, ACEWARE.com, you have SM Online Help right there. And that will bring up your help guide. When you're running your student manager, you should be able to get it by going to Help and do Online Web Help. And that will, um, generally, you can't run inline, by the way, unless you're running a single user on a local machine. Uh, the Online Web Help will bring up your student manager help guide. And you're off to the races. You can look up and uh, get information about what's going on with the student manager you're working on. The other element about the help is, of course, your webinars. Uh, so you can learn more about reporting and queries there. Lori, uh, we're good. Any, uh, no, other, no one wants to try to come up with a funky, funky query? No, I don't we're think good. so. We're good. All right. Well. Uh, thanks to everybody for joining us. Lori, thanks for another good show. Have a safe and sane Halloween, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.